everyone and welcome to DG360 and welcome to the Inside Star Citizen Review. If you're here live tonight, give yourself a round of applause. Thank you for joining us tonight. That is very special of you. And if you're watching on YouTube, thank you. Sorry you missed the show. You can check my schedule on Twitch and you will find the times that I am streaming live because I update that religiously, like all the time. If I don't, I will completely be a guilty mess and I will go to church to absolve myself of the sins of not setting up my schedule so that you guys know when I'm live or not. And that is just something I do every day, at least three times a day. I go to church and I say to myself, this was horrible. I did not update my schedule. Uh, please, God, please be gentle on me. Don't cast me into the pits of hell. All right, so the Inside Star Citizen Review is a show designed to educate and inform and criticize constructively and laugh and enjoy ourselves, right? Seems to be missing in the world today. A little bit of laughter. Does anybody remember it? I do. Let's go. Oh, shout out to Mongrel. Thanks for the thanks Star for the Citizen is a big game with I'm wearing big a hat ideals, tonight. bigger Yarr. aspirations, and some of the very biggest spaceships. And while there's lots to do in the Persistent Universe, with more and more things being added to every patch, it's these spaceships that sit at the center of everything. That's Hold why on. each year the community... We got to do this. How many minutes are we at here? Okay, we are at 11 minutes. Perfect. Sweet spot. I like the fact that it's not like seven to eight minutes long. I like that, you know, that three minutes goes a mile. Community votes big in our annual ship showdown. Your chance to determine the best of the best and award the winners with new and exclusive paints. And since this year's event starts up on Monday in like four days, we've got a special all vehicle sprint report for you this week. A sprint showdown, if you would. And we're gonna start with a big look at the upcoming Drake Corsair, seen over the course of two consecutive sprints. Dude, that was the studio they did all their mocap in, wasn't it? Wasn't that the studio they did all the mocap with the, um, or is this, is this the new? Is this the new? Because it, it almost looked like the studio. They shot all their mocap in the way that it's going. But is this the new studio that's being built right now? Like, what's going on here? Are, is this office space? Is there, man, is there that much space in this place? <sighs> oh, my God. That's so awesome, Max. Guys, do you guys realize that there is going to continually be work done on this project like it's really like a lot of people look if I were to say oh this is never going to be done that can be perceived in so many different ways that statement but what I'm trying to say it is in a positive light that this game will never be done and I'm happy about that right and that's going to be clipped and taken out of context in so many different ways <laughs> what I'm trying to say is is that the game will continually evolve. It'll never remain static. It will always have like a dynamic feel to it. And you can see the money that they're investing into it on the business side. You don't hear about this anywhere, right? The business is super important. Look at what's going on behind Jared. There's a reason why this is going on. It's just as exciting to me as a new ship. It's just as exciting to me because it means the business model is successful. The revenue coming in is being reinvested. It's exactly what I want to see in a gaming company. I mean, last week's stream, we talked about Star Atlas and the things that I saw in there. Actually had the community manager reach out to me <laughs> and the content creator who says he has nightmares and, and hears the wet fart sound effect that we do here, which I played throughout the entire Star Atlas video. Uh, hold on a second. That one. <laughs> uh, they they were vo both very nice people. They're part of our Discord. I would like you guys to be very nice to them. Uh, they offered me an interview with Mike Wagner, which I was like, eh. I'm like, just make sure you're playing a you're you're making a play and earn game, not a play to earn game, right? But like with companies, game development companies, I'm getting off track. What I like to see. Right? Is I like to see the progress. I like to see it being reinvested. I like to see the business become 
much more solid and able to produce awesome games for gamers, not just doing it for the hell of the it or crypto or NFTs or whatever, but actually doing it for the game. And that was my advice to the two who reached out to me and we'll, we'll follow along and, and, and see how star Atlas unfolds. But anyway, let's get back to this. Two consecutive sprints. As the ship moves through gray box phase, you can see the exterior detail beginning to take shape as this sprint focused primarily on the nacelle and connecting areas of the starboard side of this Ooh. asymmetrical vehicle to build them Ooh. out so they feel properly big and chunky and structurally and functionally sound, as is the Drake Way. Yes. Now, the lighter gray areas are the original concept mesh, which serves as a guide to artists to maintain the original scale and shape. When God, okay, so here's something that I think of every once in a while, and, and I don't mean to be a Debbie Downer here. I don't mean to, like, uh, I don't mean to do this here. I'm not trying to bring you guys down. But I know one of you has thought this out there that's watching either live or on YouTube right now. How many of you, a lot of the times, especially with the Banu Merchantman being the ship that I think will set the example of what I'm about to tell you, how many times have you guys felt like they could just make the ship exactly like the original mesh? Like that they could make it that kind of detailed? Because I feel like when they start to, to design it and wrap it and play with the... Uh, software that they have that it kind of like takes away from a lot of the graphical details that I so love. I, I think that I do think that I do think that from time to time. And I can think of a couple ships where like it got a little glossed down because of it, like the Banu Merchantman, like the BMM, you know, like the original kind of mesh they had. Like I, I feel like the original concept art. I just want like a little bit more detail. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whenever possible. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank the you, Drake guys. The Drake visual style is Because <laughs> I know there's going to be a lot layering, of people yelling. <laughs> with the interior structure poking out from beneath the more clad yeah. exterior. Yeah. And as Gray Box continues, it'll get closer and closer to the detailed mesh of the concept while maintaining the performance and optimization standards developed since it was first envisioned. Now, not every part of a ship moves through the pipeline at the same pace. As you can see here with the remote turret, jumping from concept mesh straight ahead to funnel art Ooh. since it's a relatively small self-contained and not needing the same level of iteration right. part as the rest of the ship easier easier and we really. also have this look at working out the landing gear a hallmark of any gray box phase making certain it's both stylish enough to maintain the manufacturer look while functional enough so that the physics system won't topple the entire ship over unless the wind kicks up <laughs> good one good one jared that was a good one that was a good one that was a good one and on the inside this sprint also <laughs> featured work on the crew quarters with a mix of gray box and final artwork coming along quite quickly <laughs> that's been enabled by efforts of team members from previous drake ships What's up, sir? How you doing, buddy? Drake, man. Listen, Drake. <sighs> listen, listen, Drake. Drake is it. Drake is the, the reason why Drake is so popular because it just is. It's like the manufacturer that puts everything together with whatever it's got. And there's your ship. And they do it aggressively in, 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 in an aggressive kind of way. And, and oh, man, it's just so Drake is so great. Don't get me started. Don't get me started on Drake. My first ship was the Cuddy, just because I love the looks of her. And I, again, going back to the original concept art, I really like the kind of slender lines of the original um, uh, Cuddy. If you watch the evolution of the Cuddy, right, when they initially changed her and beefed her up, I was really nervous. There's a lot of people out there that don't remember the changes of of the of the cutty black you know they don't they don't remember it they just know it for what it is now because they're new to the project but back in the day us old timers man i like the cutty because it had like slender lines and remember that commercial they made where the pilot did like this flip in it right and it was like elegant and they did some like you know spanish dance to it remember remember that and then and then they came in redesigned it because they were having issues with it, and uh, they made it thicker, right, thick. And at first, I didn't know what to think, but 
they classed it up to like a medium fighter and I was like fine with it because the specs were a lot better. And I said, okay, I'm cool with that, you know. And I still am. But there's a lot of original designs out there that, you know, especially the freelancer, like the original freelancer. See, people never talk about this shit anymore because they just take the freelancer for the dildo it is right now. But before it was a dildo, before it was this flying space dildo, <laughs> the freelancer was pretty tight. It kind of reminded me of the Falcon a little bit. Kind of remind me of the Millennium Falcon a little bit. How the uh, in the cockpit the stairs came down the front. Remember, and you walk down the front. That was that was pretty badass. That was pretty badass. Like right into the cockpit. That was awesome. Right, right, Melk. You remember that? That that staircase was the shit, man. Like that was one of the reasons why I loved it. Yeah. Yes. Yes, dude. Yes. Yes. Yes, man. Do don't people people do not remember that they should go back go back on the channel here DG three sixty and look up some of the ships when I first did reviews on them long ago when nobody was doing ship reviews and I was doing ship reviews of ships that weren't even released because <laughs> I was so new to the project check some of those out and check the old designs the old three hundred series love the old three hundred man had that race car had that stock look to it like badass don't you fuck with this racer kind of like uh, uh just aggressive. You know, that, that foil on the back end of the 300. Now it looks like a fucking banana. Right. <laughs> that's my that's my opinion. That's my opinion of the 300. Only because I remember the original one that was, like, so much fucking cooler. So much more cowboy bebop, by the way. I totally miss that. If I could fucking fly that thing again or see that in my hangar again, boom. I'd do anything for that. Bring that back. Cloud Imperium Games. Bring back a classic 300 and you'll sell it off the fucking rack. You can't believe how fast you'll sell like an old classic ship. Bring it back. Bring it back. Who agrees? Who agrees? Because I know Cloud Imperium watches. I know a couple of the guys over there watch the show. Bring back. Watch. Watch it. Bring back the 300. Make it the classic edition, right? However you guys want to present it. Bring it back. Watch that thing fly. Watch that thing fly off the shelves. It'll be ridiculous. Thank you, Luigi. Thank you. <laughs> I and got then one, two one. weeks later, after the conclusion of another sprint, you can see more additions mm -hmm. made like the loading ramp, a combination of several pieces that fold down and extend out to allow access through the rear of the ship. And yes, it's big enough for an Ursa and other similarly sized ground vehicles. Yay. Let's move up the ramp into the cargo hold where the process of gray box is being tweaked. Absolutely, to Jack. Material What's up, Yar? Look. Adding a bit of color to the otherwise you gray and I'm wearing face this, bro. and allowing artists to better see Got the Mongo the gear on tonight. breakout without having to dip into final art early, as can sometimes happen. Here's another look at the landing gear two weeks on with improved animation and detail. <laughs> and perhaps most excitingly, this sprint was where the wings were attached to the finished nacelles, necessitating two <laughs> separate Sap. attachment and transformation listen, listen. systems for each. Sap says he's still waiting on the DG bobblehead, and I just got to say, bro, like, that's going to ruin your car. Like, do you see the size of my head right now? Like, bobbleheads have very large heads. I have a very large head from the get-go. That bobblehead would be very dangerous, Sap. Very, very dangerous. Side, due to the asymmetrical nature of the ship which you can see here with these little doors that open to allow folding up and then close down flat when extended for maximum aerodynamics. You may also notice the thruster flaps are being made to extend and contract to adjust the amount of force yeah, being very Drake. Those engines, classic Drake. Like those engines, that should be something that's, you know, this is what we see on Drake's. These fucking engines with that fucking nozzle in the back is awesome. That is always, like, just makes me feel so good. Like, I don't know what it is about the goddamn nozzle, but they got that nozzle game down. Drake's got that, <laughs> Drake's got that nozzle game. You gotta love that Drake functionality. So feedback during this sprint was to push for a greater diversity between the attached sensor rods from the concept and the mounted weapons on the wings with additional considerations regarding the front-loading hangars on planets and stations and the potential adjustments that may need to be made to the wings. And, well, we're just going to have to see how those things progress over the next. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a really good question, you know. 
That is a very, very good question. Max brings up how what fit in the new hangers, and it seems like that's the problem that they're having, Max. You know? Void dude, how you doing, buddy? Uh, cool content creator. I think we're going to be watching one of your vids tomorrow. Maybe Void. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what's on the platter. I think we got about like 15 to 20 wonderful things brought to our attention by our community here. But, uh, yeah, man, Void dude's an awesome guy. Go check him out. And, uh, it's nice to see you here live on stream, bro. Good to see you live on stream, man. Few sprints. And while we're on the multi sprint, look at spaceships, let's check in with a little tugboat that could the Argo SRV, which entered Greybox phase with one artist on the exterior and one on the interior, and those eagle-eyed viewers may notice that the ship has grown just a little bit in the cockpit area to allow for the inter-exit animation. Did he just say a little bit in the cockpit area? Did he just say, did, did he just say, did he just say that? ...from the pilot seat. And while we're in here, let's take a look at the early gray box phase of the inside. Yeah, you can see here that Stafford taking craft check. from the raft, especially in the aft. Oh, there's a lot. Not, of, there's a lot of sexual innuendo going on here, Jared. Getting steamy up in here. Getting it steamy. Not that. <laughs> I should. I should stop this graph before I get the chat. <laughs> wow. Jared, that's does, so bad. Does stop no it. one laugh. No, no, stop, dude. Just stop. And then two sprints later, we can see the SRV much farther along in gray box phase, getting all I like the those main fuzzy shapes dice. That was in, cool. beginning the discovery of material breakup, and really just refining the entire <laughs> model overall. Right, Java? Yeah, you could say it's enough to make one chap. I'm oh, sorry. God, stop it. Just stop it, Jared. Just stop it. To make up for that, here are some follow-up <laughs> images of the Banu Merchantman from the same time as our Alien Week segment back in June. Man. Mostly to showcase how important having the right FOV on your camera is in avoiding duckbill platypus face. Same ship, correct FOV. Sorry, Ben. <laughs> and moving from ship to ship feature news, you can see here the first iteration of the vehicle salvage HUD for the upcoming Vulture, ah, Reclaimer, and more. Yes. Now on the left are all the details that are target relevant. The remaining surface area, your remaining cargo space, and extraction rate. And on the right, things like type of nozzle, cutter, and tractor, Extreme the various attributes you'll need to manage, bash. and present range. And then you can see their first still early <laughs> implementation in engine as seen here on the vulture and Ex then on the turret Ex from a reclaimer. Extreme now for how all this works, what the final implementation looks like with a full- That's value added gameplay, get your head out of the gutters. Uh, like I saw so many heads just dive into gutters right there. Value added gameplay, we're a serious, serious channel. Serious. UI and VFX, and with the internal functionality that ends with a nice crate of materials that you can sell or trade, well, there's still some time between now and the release of Alpha 318, so you can expect to see more as we get closer to release. And as a neat bonus, work on the gimbal system for hull scraping has led to new technology that may eventually change the way all wow. gimbals work. What you're seeing here is variable drag and speed based on size and weight both for the gimbal right, itself Java. and right. the item attached to it. What this ultimately means is more customization for players, All right. allowing for faster, smoother gimbals with smaller, lighter items and weapons, All and a right. potential removal of the size restriction for weapons on gimbals. All letting right. Letting players one day use what? them with weapons of a- What, what, what? That. Well, that's crazy news. That is crazy good news. I mean, like, Mm, the more customization, the more secret sauce we've uncovered, you know? Wow. Wow. A hard point's maximum size with the requisite trade-off in drag and speed. It's a great example of work for nice. one system potentially leading to improvements in another. Nice. They're going to have it affect the flight experience, man, and the physics that needs so much help, man. So physics, physics, physics. Don't get me started talking about physics. I'm going to like ram my head into a wall. <clears throat> Seriously, though, that is really good news. That is really good news.
And then, in preparation of one of the biggest Life in the Verse changes coming sometime next year, the Hammerhead just had a sprint retrofitting it with for you, internal Limitless. power relays. I, I did. A necessary component of the resource management system you, that is at the center of everything from engineering gameplay, life support, increased time to kill, wow. on-site repair, and the foundational basis for true multi-crew gameplay. Yeah, no progress happening, by the way. None happening. There's... According to according to some star citizen professionals out there, there is no progress happening. <laughs> now there's still quite a journey ahead for resource management, but it's exciting to see the work beginning to get integrated <laughs> right, right. into the persistent Nothing universe to see here. proper. Now, of course, those are just the updates on the ships well, that hello, we can yacht. currently tell you Belgian about ahead of Citizen so Thon and IAE company. on this special showdown sprint report. But Maybe you're asking yourself, hey, Jared, Ship Showdown 2952 <laughs> right. doesn't start for another four days. Surely you've got something more than spaceships to show us. Well, it's still a little bit early, but I suppose we can tease this look at recent tests of the UI card <laughs> system, a brand new way to take building blocks and display it dynamically and diegetically throughout the Persistent Universe yes. and Squadron 42. Yes. Listen, listen, building blocks and everything surrounding it. I keep, I, I have been pounding the table on building blocks and how important it is. Like how much it will affect quality of, of game experience. Like it, it has, it really has. Let's see what happens. Just don't tell anyone. Oh shit. In all its forms and fashions, everything I saw there from the UI keyboard to, and I hope it's not just a standing keyboard, I really went fucking VR with that for a moment. I literally went VR with the keyboard and I wanted to type on the fucking keyboard. I also felt like we should have like security and hacking systems, you know, like an evolution in hacking, hacking systems, like this new lighting effect here for the hangar, man. I know, I know, I know. I'm going off the deep end. I'm, my imagination's running. My imagination's running wild. But I'm going with the ball, and I'm going all the way for the touchdown, Melk. I'm going all the way for the touchdown. I I could get the five yards, I could get the five yards, right? I get I get the first down, but no, I'm going for the hail mary. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. I'm just going for the hail mary because like I like to talk about the future and where the technology could go, and this again, as we saw in the very beginning, and I spoke about the business model and to see how refreshing it is that they're taking the money and reinvesting it back into the business and how the business is evolving since it started and how the game has evolved since it started. From what I saw tonight, I know we're not going to get everything my head just poured out, right? I know that's not the way it's going to be, but I'm going for that Hail Mary. I'm going all the way down to the touchdown and what it is that we want as gamers, right? I mean, like really at the end of the day, that's what it is that we want in our game, man. I, I think, again, everything in Star Citizen when it comes to the project, when it comes to the development has always been here. We're going to create it. We're going to show you. We're going to be transparent about what it is that we're showing you. We're going to try it in the PTU. You're going to test it. If it works, we're going to slide it to the PU. And this has been happening for years upon years, right? We've seen evolution of game of, of, of literal elements of game design like mining, well, we're seeing refueling, you know, like <clears throat> you can see the baby, the baby steps taken, right? You can see how it starts and they put it out there and then you can see how they build upon it. So, you know, nothing, you know, my imagination's taken it. And really, I think with, with this game, with this project, it's something where like eventually we could, we could get to that point where it'd be, I mean, how awesome would that be? How awesome would that be? Right. Like, right, in all areas, in all areas, right? Medical, salvaging, engineering, right? All these areas. And then to add, right, the ability to create data in, in a format where you can actually communicate with other people. You know, like, here's a thing in the Moby Glass that, that's going to happen, like an email, kind of like what we got out of EVE Online. Remember the, the mail and the corporate mail and all that shit for people who played Eve online. You remember how like correspondence has happened. That's something uh, that that's would be easy to implement. That could be an upgrade on communications. We saw the keyboard there. I don't know, man, but like, man, once if they get VR, which they'd stu they'd be stupid not to figure out how to get like an easy VR 
plug in to, to just go at it and do like VR support. But yes, it's down the road. We did find something from one of our own members, Planet Wally. If you guys want to try it out right now, <laughs> it's a tutorial, right? And it doesn't get you the field of depth as true VR does, but it gets you the size of scale. It makes you aware of what's going on. If you if you have a headset, go to my channel, check it out. Uh, type in, I believe it's VR tutorial, Star Citizen VR tutorial. You'll be able to go there, follow the steps that Wally's got down there, and you'll be able to have yourself as close as you can to a VR experience in Star Citizen right now, which is cool. Just go to the channel, type that in. But this is what I see. Like when I get when I get into this type aspect of the of the design of the gameplay, man, this is where I go with it. This is where I go. I just run with the ball, and I really want to see it go all the way. Like being able to have a punch pad and being able to put in your own code so that you can protect your assets, man, and having it there and knowing that it's going to be secured and that it's not exploitable, that it's not hackable, that only you can open it, or maybe some large ordinance can, right? Like like <clears throat> there will be people that will say man, I stole all this shit and it's locked up, but I can't blow it up. Fuck that. You know, there's no realism to that. So you're going to have that, right? But in most instances, maybe your cargo is going to be safe. Maybe people don't have the means to take your your cargo and blow it up and unlock it. You know what I mean? Like maybe somebody's got a, a key to, to hack it, right? I mean, like, again, there's so many different ways you can go with the gameplay on this that in certain terms would be very easy to do right now. Like you could do it right now. Right. But some of the things I'm suggesting, right, like input on a keyboard and a VR format, that's not, you know, that's that's light years. That's an if, you know, that's speculation. And that's me going crazy because that's what I do. <laughs> this is fantastic. Wow. I love this format. Boy, that that dude, dudes. How ironic that we were talking about the very beginning of Star Citizen and early ship designs. Doesn't this remind you? This is total slow-mo. This is total slow-mo mode, Luigi. Doesn't this, guys, remind you for the old school veterans in here? Doesn't this remind you of that fucking menu display in the hangar? Uh, the the Remember the, the rock the rock hangar? You'd go in there and it had the fucking menu display like this and you would rotate it and shit. Look at this shit. Look at this shit. Hold on a second. This is beautiful. Hold on. Let's Let's... We got we to gotta get this ready up here and roll in here. Let's do this shit. Get it slow-mo mode here. <laughs> Let's do it, Pepe. It's slow-mo <laughs> Thank you, Mobster. Where were we at, Pepe? It's slow-mo. And thank you. That was me dying of a heart attack at the very end. I was acting. I'm okay. I'm cool. Don't worry. I'm cool. I didn't die for real. I know it was very convincing that acting, but uh, that was a, that was a, a really good slow mo time brought to us by. Uh, I believe that was Luigi. Thank you, Luigi, for that. I uh, appreciate you. <laughs> Yuck! Says what an actor. Wow, this is like, wow, man. So what did we learn wow. this week? That is well, so Well, we learned cool. that the Corsair, <laughs> asymmetrical explorer from Drake, is making pretty that solid happens, progress through the ship does. pipeline. That ongoing work on salvage and hull scraping may yet lead to positive changes for the combat experience <laughs> through thank, gimbal thank you, improvements. Oz. Thank you. That work Slanger. is already underway, retrofitting some of our ships for the enormous change resource management will bring later next year. That. FOV is super did, important if you don't want did, three dude. dozen duck memes of the Banu <laughs> Merchantman. 
and that ship showdown 2952 begins this monday and it's your chance to decide the oh. best of the best over the following oh, month. oh shit for inside argo star repeat. citizen i'm jared argo Huckabee, repeat here inside the performance capture stage where characters from star citizen and squadron 42 will be wow. brought to life by tremendous performers as time goes on we'll see you wow. all here next week wow that was that was a that was an a plus man that was content that was that was content, man. That was content. Yeah, no work here. Like this is just great. I love this video, right? Just it, it it's just like, hey guys, there's there's a lot of progress happening in 2022, by the way. Just want you guys to know out there, <laughs> Star Citizen experts. <laughs> the <laughs> you know, sometimes you know it's crazy. You know, it, it really is. If you sound really important. Uh, people think it's the truth, right? Like I, I really find that that is the way that it normally is on on uh, video creation and watching the consumption of video creation. If somebody sounds really intelligent or important, then that what they're saying, man, that has to be the truth. And like, man, fuck, man, this is the internet, dude. <laughs> this is the internet. Anybody can create content and put the content on there, man. And I think people tend to forget that and they just hear like the really important voice and they say, oh, man, this person must know. But yeah, tons of progress happening here. And wow, the size of this is ridiculous. This is like movie studio. This is a legit movie studio space right here. Like MGM shit. Like this is craziness. Where characters from Star Citizen and Squadron 42 will be brought to life by tremendous performers as I time hope goes they put, on. Yeah, like, 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 <laughs> Ash, you made me laugh, dude. Yeah, dude. I mean, like, this looks really professional. And, like, let's hope, let's hope that subscribership money went into this and that we see a lot of episodes in the production value increase. I want to see here, here's a constructive criticism, and I don't know what they're up to right now. I would love if they had content creations that came directly from this studio because you would see that bar being raised. You would see that next level of production. And, you know, God bless the people working on the shows right now and the fact that they're super transparent. I am not trying to be a douche. I am not trying to be that guy, right? I'm just trying to give constructive criticism. And the thing that I would love to see is – I would love to see production on content creation on the official Star uh, Citizen YouTube channel be done here in this studio, if at all possible. I think that's a smart move, uh, and I think that like more people would be able to appreciate it. Look at this. Look at this setup, man. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. We'll see you all here next week. Phenomenal. Let me do a couple of gestures. Like Throwing in those bits for the gestures. <laughs> wow. He's got he's he's making sure all the gestures are covered. Now, if you left, I'm sorry for you because we're gonna have an after party and it's gonna be great because it's content that was suggested by you guys. If you're on YouTube right now watching, let's give him a round of applause. They tried to be here and it's okay. Listen, if you're watching on YouTube and you couldn't be with us live, don't worry about it. Go to my Twitch channel. You can see my schedule. It's always updated. It's when I'm going to be live. And I, I make sure to be available for both uh, the western side of the globe and the eastern side of the globe as I do a night show uh, tonight on the ISCR and I do a morning show uh, on the DG in the morning show. So please go and visit us. You have no excuse. Uh, check us out. Get to us here live. We always love the first level energy and seeing you guys, um, you know, typing in here and chatting and communicating is is just awesome. I love it. Don't forget to comment, like, hit the bell, do what you got to do on YouTube to make us uh, awesome. We're awesome. We're awesome. World domination. It's happening this year. All right. I'm feeling good, guys. Are we ready for the after party for everybody here tonight? I, th I feel an after party. I feel the magic of an after party. Oh, it's about to go down. After party. 
it's an after party. Yeah. I just made it funky. I just made it funky. I really did. That was awesome. Pepe, did you see I made that that funky? Did you see I made that funky? Yeah. Uh, I know you did. <laughs>